Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Adventure Belt. My name is Kelly. Today I'm installing a 100% interior chrome delete kit from Miso Customs in my 2020 Tacoma. It's happening right now, so stay tuned. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Like most of you, I was never really a fan of all the chrome in my 2020 Tacoma. There just seems to be a lot of it. Now, it's easy to clean, it's kind of durable, although it's on plastic, still not a fan. Miso Customs has been killing it in the Tacoma aftermarket world for a very long time, and they just came out with the last component to their interior chrome delete kit, the door handle chrome delete covers. Now, I've had some of these pieces for a while and I was kind of waiting for the kit to be complete so that I could do it all at one time. Now, I initially got the vent ring covers first and then I got the shifter chrome delete uh, kit replacement next. And then I kind of piecemealed together. I got the key fob, I got the red button because the red button's way cooler than the stock button. And then I just received the door handles like two weeks ago. So it's all going in right now. I've got the 3T PAM off and the bezel off. Now that 3T PAM is an absolute necessity if you run any kind of navigation or just want a solid phone holder, solid camera holder. It is just super, super functional. And if you wanna know how to install it, I'll put a link right here. It's a great video to get you going on how to install that on a third gen Tacoma. Now that we have the bezel off, I have to pull the head unit to the stereo off and then start pulling the um, climate control that whole panel has to come off. With a 10 millimeter socket, we're gonna go ahead and remove the head unit. And now with the head unit loosened so that this bottom tab can come out, we're going to grab the top of the clock here and we're just gonna gently pry outward. Now down by your feet here on the driver's side, I had to loosen this panel here in order to pull this all the way out. But once you get that loosened up, this comes out and then disconnect all of the wires back here. There's three harnesses that clip into it. It's just a push on the top of the tab and they pull right out. Now this is on the driver's side to remove this. All we're going to do is grab the same as before and we're just going to pry slowly to get these all off they're held in by a bunch of retaining clips and we're just going to work our way around if you lower your steering wheel it might help to get it out all the way all right it's out and it's just held in by the same clips as before all right now for this passenger side trim piece we're gonna use a non-marring trim removal tool and we're just gonna insert it into this edge here and we're just gonna start working it around to remove this piece. And there it is. Working on the passenger side trim piece, I'm gonna be removing this inner bezel for the air vent come on the back side, and there's three tabs, one here, 
one here and one here that hold this whole cylindrical uh, AC vent or vent in here. What we're gonna do is take our pry tool, our non-marring trim tool, and we're going to pry in here, push out a little bit, and it just lifts up ever so slightly. Come to the other side, gonna lift out on that, lift up, and it popped right out. And now we're gonna take the vent, we're gonna set it to the side. Now if you look on the inside of this, you will see six green little nubs that stick out. Those actually hold the chrome piece into this bezel. So we're going to be taking some wire cutters and just cutting these tabs. You can see they're almost plastic welded in. So we're just going to cut them out. I switched over to these smaller wire cutters. I was having a hard time getting those bigger wire cutters in there and get them cut nice and flush. And you have these little chrome tabs here. All right, so now it's starting to come out. I'm using a punch, and I basically, after I cut the tops of these green heads off, I am pushing through with this punch to get them to come out. And there's the ring. You just make sure you clear all the holes of all this green plastic here for the new trim piece. After you have removed the vent, take note of where they came out of. I don't know if it makes a difference but I'm definitely gonna keep track. This is the far left driver's side and I'm going to make sure that, that stays with the bezel right here. And now that we have this chrome ring removed, we're gonna do the exact same process to the other three vents. Now moving on to the center console, same process. I'm gonna start moving my way left to right, removing this vent with the trim tool. There's not enough clearance for these dikes to get in there, so I'm gonna use a razor blade and just cut them off. I definitely like the razor blade version better. I think it's easier to get in there. Uh, my, my tabs here are really high. Um, I've seen videos where dudes take wire cutters and are able to get in there. Mine are just way too high. So I'm just gonna use a razor blade. It's working fine.
And the very last one is the passenger side, all by its lonesome self, passenger side ring. Take the razor blade, cut them off. Last one. Now I'm going to open up my new vent ring replacement kit from Miso Customs. So now here's the old chrome ring vents. And here are the new Miso Customs ring vents. And I went with the black. I thought there was just a good contrast. I know the dash isn't really black. It's more of a dark gray. Miso Customs has a variety of colors. Go on their website, check them out. All right, for reinstallation, if you look on the back side here, you can either see a, it's not gonna focus, but on the back side, you can either see a one, three, and four, or a two, and those are positioned up. So starting from the far left side on the driver's side, we're going to be using this one and we're going to look for on the ring where it says 134 and we're gonna put that up and we're gonna insert it, the top notch here into the top slot here. You can see the three notches and it's gonna slide right in there. And then you look on the back side, you want to make sure that the three tabs are protruding through so that it is secure. Tab one, tab two, tab three. And now I'm going to put the vent back in. All we're going to do, grab the same vent that you removed from it, flip it upside down, align the tabs, and reinsert. And all you're going to do is firm pressure down all the way around. Check your work, make sure everything is lined up nice and tight. Make sure the vent spins and closes. And that is the finished product. That looks really nice, much nicer than the chrome. And now we're gonna repeat this three more times. So here in the center console bezel, so this is number two. If you look on the top back of the bezel, you'll see a two on here. That is gonna go up and you're gonna index it into the holes here and depress. Look on the back side, make sure you have positive contact with all three tabs. Make sure everything's nice and firm. You'll feel them kind of click into place. It's very positive. Grab the air vent, align the tabs. Depress it. Spin it, make sure it's nice and solid. Oh, that looks so good. Moving on. Now this ring is gonna be number three. I'll look on the back. One, three, four. So really only the second one. The, from left to right, the second one, left of the big hole where your media center goes, that's the only one that's gonna be different than the other three. So you're gonna insert this one. Depress. And you'll feel your finger around here. It's nice and flush. So grab the air vent, align the tabs, depress. Again, check for functionality. Looks good, works good. All right, number four, last one. If you look at the back of the tab, there's arrows that point up here and here. I'm just gonna line the top arrows with the number four top arrows. 
Line it up and insert. And that one's done. All right guys, we're moving right along to the Chrome Delete Kit. Now we're gonna start with the start button and the full drive selector. To remove those, flip it to the back side. So there's a tab on this side and a tab on this side. All we're going to do is take a screwdriver. We're going to depress on that and then push down, depress on that and push down. And that's gonna release it and it's gonna pop right out. Same thing on the full drive selector. Depress, depress, and it pops right out. Now to disassemble the ring here, take a pick tool, and you can see on here, there's a tab here, a tab here, and a tab here. All we're going to do is depress these tabs and push out. And it comes right apart. And now for the four wheel drive selector button, what we have to do is disassemble it. A really small Phillips head screwdriver, and we're gonna remove this screw and this screw. And that comes out. And that comes out. And keep track of how all of this is going together. I'm kinda, I'm gonna kinda set them up as they go for reassembly. And now if you look in the center part of this assembly, there's a Phillips head screwdriver at the bottom of this hole here. Okay, that comes out and then disassemble. And you wanna hold all of this together. So hold your finger over the knob selector switch and take this screw out. And then this whole thing comes apart. And now you can see inside here with the small flathead screwdriver, there's two tabs. You'll see the chrome protruding on the sides. And all you're going to do is depress the tabs that are holding that chrome in. All right, so I basically I ended up having to kind of pull that tab out and then get my fingernail behind the chrome ring to help it come out. And then just work it out, stick it under there and just work the whole thing out. All right, now before I start reassembling all the chrome delete, I'm going to put my new start button into the start button while I have it out. Now what you want to do is on the back side of it, there is a tool to help you remove the start button. This tool is just basically a piece of wire with a hook on it. You're going to slide this in between the edge of the start button, hook it on there, and then you're just going to pull. And you're probably going to have to work it around a little bit. This thing is held on with four tabs, so it's definitely not going to come out easily. There's one. there it's off. So all this tool basically does is it hooks in under this lip here and it's just pulling it up and it's being held in with these four tabs right here. Now before I put my new start button into my bezel here, you need to make sure you want to orient this the proper way. So you can see there's a side that's a little bit bulbous on the right side. Put it into the console Make sure it is the correct way. You don't want to have your start button upside down. So put it in. 
and that's the way it's going to orient. Now that you have it oriented the proper way, you're just going to depress it in and make sure it works. Perfect. Now we're going to remove our ring for the starter button from the Chrome Delete Pack with our button facing 12 o'clock position. There's a white mark here. That's going to be the 12 o'clock position and we're just going to insert it 12 o'clock to 12 o'clock. And just take your time with this, making sure you get everything lined up. Don't force anything. And there you have it. I'm gonna put it back in the console and just nice even pressure. Snaps right back in. All right, now for the four wheel drive button, what we're gonna do is take the new Miso Customs blackout ring and we're gonna insert it where the chrome ring came out of and we're gonna spin it until it kind of finds its home and then depress it until it clicks into place. Now we're gonna drop our selector button right back in into the two wheel drive position. Keep our finger there to hold that in, drop the back onto it and spin it until it locks into place. And now we're gonna take our screw and we're gonna reinsert the screw back into the center hole. And definitely don't over tighten that. Now we're gonna install this section here. And this part is keyed to a slot. So try to drop it in where it's gonna line up the first, and there it is. And you see the little tab here, right here on the bottom, that's where it has to line up. So once you get those parts lined up, we're going to drop in this board here and it only goes into one place. Looks like that's where it goes right there. And then we're gonna drop the back cover plate on. Make sure the pins go on smoothly, don't force them. And then take your two screws, insert them back into the holes. Make sure the screws are nice and tight, but definitely don't over torque them. And now we've got the full drive selector completely installed with new Chrome delete rim, we're gonna reinstall it into the bezel. Now doesn't that look so much nicer? All right, now that we have all the Chrome Air gone and we have the um, four wheel drive selector and start button and the button itself completely changed out, we're going to reinstall this into the truck and then we're gonna work on the center console. All right, so we're starting with the passenger side. We're starting on the far right side. And if you look at the bezel here, you can see right here, there's a little yellow mark and there's also an arrow pointing up. That is going to index this whole thing to point up like this. So if you just line the, the notches up, make sure the vent side is straightened out, all aligned nicely. Nice even pressure, push it in. Make sure everything works good, nothing's moving around. All right, moving on to the center. Now we're gonna reinstall the climate control bezel. All this is gonna do is we're gonna notch it off of the driver's side. It has to go under the panel, the kick panel, under the steering column. Index that in first. Line up all the knot up. Very first, reattach all the electronic plugs. The ignition. Four wheel drive indicator. And the buttons. And now we're gonna index off the driver's side here. Align all the notches and press firmly in. And now you can, I'm gonna push back in under the steering column. Oh man, this just looks so good. All right, now I'm gonna put the stereo back together.
All right, now the center bezel is ready to go in. I have to make sure the wires for the 3T PAM are in the notch and press. And now all I have to do is reinstall the 3T PAM. The climate control unit's back in place, all the vents are back in place. The 3T PAM, every time I disassemble and reassemble this 3T PAM, I just completely forget how awesome this thing is. The construction on it is so well made, it just goes right together. It's just really, really nice. I don't know what I would do without it. All right, so now that we have all of these pieces in, we're going to remove the center console and work on this. All right, now to remove the center console, all we're gonna do is remove, we're gonna pull down on the boot here for the shift handle. And then we're gonna twist this shift lever off. Lift up the glove box. The e-brake's gotta go up and just start prying the whole thing up. There it is. And then fish the boot off of the e-brake. Ah. Good thing that came out. Also unplug this, unless you just rip it out like I did. With the console over here on the workbench, this is a chrome ring that's gonna remove. Kind of figure out where it's at on the bottom side. You can see all of the little chrome tabs that are right here. All we're gonna do is grab a flathead screwdriver and use that to start pulling these tabs. And as you're pulling them out, you're going to want to press down on that chrome ring from the side and now you can kind of see it here i've gotten three tabs out and you can see this edge right here this corner right here is pulling up just kind of hold it with your finger and work it out as you pull these tabs and the ring comes right out now pull out the new miso customs ring Insert it over the tabs, press down firmly. Should hear that nice positive click saying that it's in. Now I'm gonna reinstall the center console and I'm gonna bring that last ring with me. To reinstall the center console, index it where it belongs. Glove box has to go up, or the center console box has to go up and then feed it down over the parking brake. You're gonna have to fight this thing all over again. wasn't too bad and now make sure to make our connection line up all of our tabs and click it into place now for the shifter ring all we're gonna do is take the tab index it so that it matches up with the chrome one and put it right over and then reinsert the shifter itself Once it's straight, 
and then click the whole thing back into place. The next piece of the puzzle is going to be the door handle covers. All these do is slide on, they click into place, and they are left right, so make sure you figure out which one's which. They're pretty self-explanatory, they only go on one way. I'm gonna start by wiping them down with some alcohol just so I get all of the gunk off of them. There's no adhesive, so it really doesn't make that big of a difference. Just personal preference. And that's all there is to it. All right, gonna do that three more times. I found on a couple of the doors that it was really hard to get this back clip done on the back of the door handle covers. What I did was I took my non-marring trim tool, I kind of put it behind there a little bit and then I closed it and I just kind of depressed it and it clicks right in. And it looks amazing. The very final piece to this Miso Customs kit to delete all the chrome. We are doing some serious chrome fighting in here. Actually, I like that chrome fighting. I think I might use that as a thumbnail. Last piece, covering up this thing that's always in my face every day. I'm gonna take a, a little bit of alcohol and paper towel, clean this off real good because this is adhesive. Take it out of the package and we're gonna peel off adhesive backing and put it on. I like it. It's the only thing I didn't get in black or like a super dark gray. I want it to be just a little bit different and remind me that my truck is cement, not black. And the final touch, the Miso Customs air freshener. Ooh, that smells nice. As a bonus, I'm gonna switch over my key to the minimalist key fob from Miso Customs. I mean, it's like a cool old school Altoids can. This is all we're gonna need. Step one is to remove the factory key. You press in the side here and that pulls out. And you can use this to spread those two apart. Just leveraging it apart. Now you have this separated. All we're gonna use out of this is the rubber gasket on this side and this computer chipboard right here. And be gentle with it. So now I'm gonna insert the board into this piece here. And this is the back side, and it fits right into place. And I'm gonna put the rubber gasket back on. And now on the front, I'm gonna put the buttons back in. I'm going to insert the buttons, and they do key into place. So there's the lock button. This is the unlock button. And then this is the panic button. And now we're just going to put these together so that nothing falls apart. And you have to basically push these two together very tightly. Now I'm gonna insert the bottle remover. And it still has a little part for your keys there. And I'm gonna take my two screws Tighten it down. You can see from the gaps, it's all nice and tight. And just check to make sure all your buttons work. And the before and after. All right guys, that's all I've got. 
All the interior chrome in my 2020 Tacoma is finally gone forever and never coming back. A huge shout out to Miso Customs for your guys' innovation. This video is not sponsored by them, but they are just rocking it with all of the stuff they keep coming out with to keep that Tacoma game strong. Uh, check their line. They have a huge amount of colors for all this chrome delete. You don't have to go black. They have red and white and all kinds of different colors. Check the link below. They could definitely use your support. And speaking of support, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and see you guys next time.